president-elect, which we've just spoken about, arrived in Lagos today. And it wouldn't be surprising to see his residence in the nation's commercial capital turn into a mecca of sorts, as we saw at the defense house in the nation's capital, Abuja. So, I mean, that is his arrival uh, in the nation's commercial capital, a state he has governed for eight years and, of course, been instrumental uh, to the emergence of subsequent governors in the state. So what is at stake, uh, really, uh, with the meetings we saw last week and the possible meetings we'll be seeing uh, in the coming days? In fact, there's said to be uh, an incoming meeting or a planned meeting about how, you know, the positions will be zoned. So let's take a look at the key positions as they are today or as they will be uh, in the coming weeks when this outgoing government hands over uh, to the incoming government. By the way, these are the uh, leadership ambitions, the people who are uh, going for the Senate uh, president position, and then take a look at the House of Representatives position. Uh, those are some of the uh, aspirants, people who are gone in. But let's now see the balance of power uh, as it is now. Let's take a look at the balance of power as it looks to be uh, for the president-elect, the vice president-elect, and of course, uh, other positions in the National Assembly. If uh, pull that up, we know that the president-elect uh, is from the southwest region of the country. The vice president-elect is from the northeast region of the country. But it is still uh, to be seen where the Senate president, the deputy Senate president, the speaker, the deputy speaker will come from. And our guest tonight is someone who understands what's going on behind the scenes. All of those meetings you've seen, well, he should have an insight to that one. We're joined by Honorable Bello Kumar, who is of the APC uh, Gombe State. He's a third term member of the House of Representatives, Chairman House of Reps Committee on Police. Now, he's currently the chairman of Joint Task of the 10th Assembly. Now, that's a coalition of APC, PDP, NNPP, Labour Party, APCA, the, the 10th uh, Assembly members elect, as well as, you know, uh, other positions he's held. Honorable. It's good to have you on the program. Good evening. Thank you. Good to have me. Uh, I just, I'm curious, and I imagine for a lot of Nigerians, have you also been able to visit the president-elect? It looks like it is customary at this point for the who's in or who's who in, your, in the APC and even the PDP, as we've seen, to visit the president-elect. Not yet, because I, I'm just coming back from my laser hatch from Maka. But that's but something I, you plan to do, I'll of certainly course. certainly do so. All right. Uh, I was asking if that's something you plan to do, Honorable. Um, basically, thank you very much, Kyrie. You see, I have listened carefully to the first segment of this program. And um, you link it up with the, the expectations of Nigerians in some weeks and uh, to come. Let me quickly say that... Uh, the constitutional responsibility of parliament is to provide laws for the good governance of Nigeria as a community. It is in view of this that uh, we members of indeed Nines Assembly who are returning and some members elect for the 10th Assembly, we came up with this idea of joint tax as a coalition, which cut across the political parties. If you listen to the last guest, he talked about so many figures in the handover notes. There is no way you can achieve this as a government if you don't have a legislation. And in doing that, you need cooperation and partnership between the arms of government. So there is need to have a stable house and a stable uh, national assembly. How do you do that? You must queue in into the best global practices. Why you find out all over the world, the mainstream party, the majority party in a particular country produces the presiding officers. Nigeria cannot be an exception. 
And that's why we seek the cooperation and partnership of our sister political parties to form a coalition of responsible, seasoned, experienced members to come up with a group that will queue in and adopt anything that is suggested by the leadership of the mainstream APC party that is in government. We must ensure the incoming government of Ashwaju Bola Tinubu succeed. As Nigerians, we are not sent by our constituents to come and quarrel or fight with anybody. We are assembled to discuss Nigeria and discuss developmental programs and projects and policies of the government by way of partnership so that right. Nigeria can move forward from where we are. Having said this, I have, I have seen you have displayed interested parties. It is their franchise to contest these positions. But there must be only one speaker and one deputy speaker, one Senate president and one deputy Senate president. They are all men of integrity. They are our friends. We knew them. We knew what they can do. But Section 14 of the Constitution have helped in sorting out some silent and key and fundamental issues. That is the issue of social justice. If you look at 14.1, it's talking about social justice. If you look at 14.3, it's talking about federal character. I am a pan-Nigerian, and all members of this coalition, joint tax, are pan-Nigerians. By coming in to National Assembly to represent your constituency, you are no longer a local player. You are a national player. And therefore, you will be looked at issues subjectively and objectively. You have to look at Nigeria first, the unity of this country. You have to look at the rights and the privileges that can be accorded to other segments and other parts of the country, irrespective of religion, political party, gender, region, or what have you. Right. So therefore, the coalition called joint tax, we are not promoting any particular candidate, and we are not after or against any particular candidate. What we are after are very simple. One, the unity of Nigeria. Two, the stability of the National Assembly. Three, to ensure cooperation and partnership with other segments of government. And most fundamentally, to have a stable, tense assembly. We right. have seen as a litmus test in two instances where in the first leg of Buhari administration, where you have uh, and uh, Bukola Saraki and Ekwere Madu. It doesn't work away. It doesn't speak well about that democracy in the world. You don't do such partnership. So we cannot go for a repeat of such. Well, honorable. And we have not seen the Wase and uh, Baja combination. That they are working in tandem with the executives. Members of the Nice Assembly can testify to you that in relation to budget implementation all over the country, you will give Buhari government a pass mark because budget implementation never go below 80, 85 to 90 percent. All right, Honorable, and let that me what come we are in trying here. to achieve during uh, let, me, let me come in here, if, uh, pardon me, let Honorable. Let me finish one second. One minute, uh, one minute, just a moment, you land on that point. You ensure that assure you succeed. Right. Uh, I, I think it's a point you've made, essentially, that your goal is unity, stability, uh, cooperation, and ensure that this, this uh, incoming government succeeds. But, you know, this joint task which you, which you talk about, uh, what is the composition like? Uh, how much of members do you have? Because you said that you are not looking to zone, you're not supporting anybody, you just want what is best for the country. So what is the composition of this joint task? How much members elect do you have? I, I as a, as, a, as a coalition, we have a structure. We have chairman and we have co-chairman. The co-chairman is a product of PDP. And we have a secretary who is of NMPP structure. And we have six zonal coordinators and co-zonal coordinators. We have a vice chairman north and vice chairman south. And we have three spokespersons. All of these are of different political structures. This is to tell you that 
when we are in that great chamber, we are not expected to be discussing our political parties. We are expected to discuss Nigeria, Nigerian development, and the partnership and queuing in the global-based practices. We cannot metamorphose to local and even discuss uh, 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 political, political party issues. Political party is a platform that we come to discuss Nigeria. And when we come to discuss uh, uh, what, what benefit, what promote, what make Nigeria become a key player in the global world, we will put other sentiments aside. So this is a coalition that come up with a combination of all uh, uh, our players from different political parties, and that to show you that it's a pan-Nigerian project. Uh, what I mean, Honorable, is and of the 360 honorable... members of the House of Representatives, how many of them are part of this joint task? What I will tell you for free is, as a politician, we have the substantial number to determine what will happen in that election. What's most fundamental is we are waiting for the body language of the major or the main party, the APC. Let the party APC zone this position and you will see miracle. We have the strength, we have the numerical strength, we have credible people, we have people that have vast experience in legislation and in parliamentary activities. I can tell you for free that we are politicians, we cross the bridge where we read the bridge. We have that number. We have the number that will change all the dynamics. But what is most fundamental? We must ensure Ashwaju Bola and Tinubu government succeed as we are part of the government. The fact that you are a legislator or you are from the judiciary doesn't take you out of the part of that government. We are discussing Nigeria. And our most fundamental interest is Nigeria developing, is making Nigeria great. And we must rally around every right thinking person who is willing to put Nigeria forward. We are willing to partner with such a person. Right. That, what we are saying to queue in with the APC as a party is because that is a global practice. All over the world, the mainstream party, the, major, the majority party produces the presiding officer. So we are not doing anything different. But as I said, we respect all the aspirants. They are our, our friends. We know them. We know their antics. We know their credentials. We know their pedigree. And they are men of integrity. But there must be only one speaker at a time. But what okay. we are saying, what is not negotiable is Nigeria the unity of this country, the stability of this country, and in fact, the stability of the Tenth Assembly. All right. So you've said that you are waiting for the APC to release the zoning arrangement. Uh, hopefully that will be in, a coming, in the coming days. But uh, let's take a look at the balance of power yet again. So at least uh, we get a sense of the thinking within your group. Uh, at least if, if we don't know the, the, the direction you're going, you can at least tell us the direction you will not go in. So we have a president-elect from the southwest, uh, a vice president-elect from the northeast. Are you saying that uh, if, even if the party zones the Senate presidency or the speakership to a region that is already represented as president-elect, vice president-elect, you are okay with it? We, we respect the ideals of party politics but there is presumption of regulation, uh, regularity. This presumption of regularity is we are expecting the party to do the right thing. The party are conversant with the constitutional provisions of Section 14. The party are equally conversant with the diversity of Nigeria as a cosmopolitan nation. The party equally expect and respect the franchise right of each individual. We are Zoom and we expect that, as I said, we presume regularity. We are expecting that the party will look at segments of this country that are not favored, so that we will have an all-inclusive governance. When so you once say the party do the right thing, we are going to key in and give the party the best of our cooperation and rally around other interested groups to ensure that we do what is right only to ensure a stable government, a stable Nigeria, Ashwaju Bola and Tinubu government succeed, and we have a stable tense assembly. There will be value added government. So speak to us. When you said that, uh, I mean, you want this to go to segments or regions that are not favored, uh, what are those regions that are not favored? Uh, southeast, the south-south? If, if, if you have the president coming from... 
if you have the president, if you have the president coming from north, south, from southwest, and you have the vice president coming from northeast, the other four zones are at liberty to take these positions, so that you have this sense of bilingo because we are preaching an all-inclusive government. Any right. position so, can go to anywhere. Right. So you said that if a party does the right thing, you would support. And um, I mean, I asked, what if the party uh, chooses to go the way of regions that are not that are already represented? And you said that you believe strongly that the party would. Uh, but what are you hearing? Uh, I mean, from those meetings, uh, the body language of the president-elect and other leaders of your party. How confident are you uh, that I mean those segments that are not represented well uh, will be factored in, bearing in mind that some have said the votes you, you contributed to the success or to the election of the president-elect will also come to bear. And we've seen regions that didn't contribute as much. Uh, take the southeast, for example. Uh, so what becomes of the southeast? I, I, I'm not in position to say how the zoning will look like. But as I said, there is presumption of regularity. And you, you expect something good coming. You have, this posit you have to have these positive thoughts. You don't have to start thinking of faults. As I said, Ashwaju Bola Ame Tunubu is a seasoned politician who have seen it all. He has rushed through the radar of prosperity gradually and patiently. So also he has an erudite, very eloquent, very capable vice president coming from my zone. We are very optimistic that two major political players who are nationalists will do the right thing. And the chairman of the, political, the political parties, all of them, I will respect Nigerians. That's why soon we'll start embarking on lobbying. Lobbying is accepted all over the world. All the parliament in the world accept lobbying as part of their, 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 their activities. So therefore, I am assuring you that once the party announces their zoning formula, God's willing, we are going to queue in and ensure that we do the right thing. The major the major responsibility of a political party, even in the parliament, is to defend the policies and programs of the government. And therefore, that idea I'm telling you that I am very, very certain that they will try to do just and fair to all manner of people. This I expect, and this is what I think is coming to play. Uh, well, you said that the, the joint task, as, as you put it, uh, has, is a coalition of APC, PDP, NNPP, LP, APCA. And you say that all of the members in this coalition are waiting for the decision of the All Progressives Congress. So you're saying that you have the, the word, the agreement of members of the PDP, NNPP, Labour Party, APGA. All of them say that they will go the way uh, that the APC decides. Yes, because they are seasoned uh, parliamentarians. We were in the house with them. Most of them we were in the house since 2011. But, but a lot of them are new. Integrity. They have given uh, honorable, a lot of these people are new. I mean, take uh, the Labour Party representatives. Some of them, uh, for example, are new, newbies. So you've not told us the numerical strength you have. Some might say you may just be bluffing. I mean, part of what politicians do, try to keep their cards to their chests and you know, make it look like a lot is happening when nothing might be happening. Let me tell you, Kaede, sometimes last like week, the secretary of the coalition, Honorable Alima Daki, appeared before these channels on a program, and he reiterated his position as the secretary and member of the coalition, and he is of AMPP extraction. Sometimes last two weeks, my co-chairman, Kingsley Chinda from Rivers, a seasoned, well-respected parliamentary par excellence, he appeared on challenge programs. And he reassert and reiterated his position as his, with his willingness and that of his political party members to queue in whatever the formula came up with by the APC uh, uh, party as a majority party. So what are we talking about here? But in, remain, in relation to numerical strengths, you see, as a politician, and I am a student of politics, I cross the bridge when I reach the bridge. I right. believe in getting results. 
All right. So uh, I can tell you, take it from me, on my honor, that we have the numbers to turn around okay. and give the result we want to have, God's willing, whatever is the body language, whatever right. is the position well, of the party, APC. I am very optimistic that God's willing, we are going to get that leadership. Well, Honorable, I can that only take. In. I, I can only take no, no, what you give me. That you, you've in. not given me the numbers, no, no, no. so I cannot take it from you. But we have to thank you so much, <laughs> uh, Honorable Bello Kuma of the APC Gombe State, three-time member now of the House of Representatives and Chairman House Committee on Police. Thank you so much for your time.